Hello, I'm Shannon, you're watching Super User TV. I'll be doing various videos on development, and as a number of you may know, I am part of the Venom ROM development team. Today, I'll be showing you how to compile Android from the AOSP tree, and I will be showing you how to compile it from various gits, for example, CyanogenMod. This may sound really hard and complicated, but it's actually quite easy because all you have to do is enter a series of commands and the compile is completely automated. This guide, I will be showing you how to compile Android 4.0.4 for the Galaxy Nexus on Ubuntu 10.04, and I'll be running it in VMware, but you can do it natively and in VirtualBox. So let's jump straight in. If at any time I'm going too fast, you can pause and rewind and watch it again. I'll post a link to the instructions from Free Your Android down in the description below. And if you open it, you can copy and paste the command straight into the command windows. Right, so to start off with, we are going to download VirtualBox from virtualbox.org. You want to go to Downloads. And then you want to download the one for your operating system. Next, you want to go to Ubuntu.com Ubuntu.com and um, you want you don't want to download the latest one you want to download 10.04 64-bit you definitely need 64-bit for this so you go to download and install and then you select Ubuntu 10.04 64-bit and start the download now that's done, we want to install VirtualBox. Don't want it on my desktop. Install. Okay, it will then ask you to install the driver, so you want to install it. Okay, now that it has installed, you want to run it. Okay, so that's started. Now you want to go to New. Next, Ubuntu 10.04. That will automatically detect it. And then you want to set the memory. I would have to recommend you set it at least 2 gigabytes. I'm going to give it 4. Okay, now you want to create a new hard disk. This wizard will pop up. Click next, dynamically allocated. Okay, you'll want at least 30 gigabytes for this so that you can store the source and build everything. And then create. Now, before you run it, you want to double click. The first run wizard will pop up. And then insert installation media. You want to go to the .iso file that you downloaded for Ubuntu. Next, and start. There we go. VirtualBox is starting. Okay, so when you actually power on the machine in VirtualBox, it will ask you to run the first installation. That's really simple. It's pretty much laid out for you in the installation wizards. You just want to erase and install on the virtual hard drive that you created, and that's it. When it's done, you just want to reboot and log in. For the VMware users, um, VMware have its automated setup for Ubuntu, so that's really easy. Okay, when it started, you just want to click on your username and log in. Okay, so Ubuntu's booted up. Now let's open up the terminal. Actually, if it's a new install, you can go to Applications, Accessories, Terminal. Now, you want to type in sudo i into your password, and that will get into uh, constant root permissions. Now, you want to add the repository so that apt get knows where to get Java JDK. So, add hyphen apt hyphen repository. Inverted commas, dev space HTTP 
archive.canonical.com slash space lucid space partner inverted commas now you want to type in apt get update so you update the repositories now you want to apt get install sun hyphen java 6 hyphen jdk now what that does is that it's downloading the java development kit now you want to apt get install python now uh, you're going to have to pull a bunch of required packages and uh, these will only work the, most of these will only work on 64 bit and won't work on 32 bit um, okay you can find this in the written instructions okay now that's done you'll want to run this command if you're on 11.10 if you're running Ubuntu 10.04 you don't need to do this Okay, now let's configure your USB. You want to type in gksudo gedit etc. udev rules dot d fifty one hyphen android dot rules. Okay, now that's done. Uh, you'll want to paste all of this into it. I've already pasted it. Um, you'll find it on the written instructions. Uh, it's not necessary if you're building for the Galaxy Nexus, but it's worthwhile regardless. And once you've saved the file, you want to change the permissions. From now on you don't need root, but since I am running in a virtual machine that I only use for compiling Android, I don't really mind. But for security reasons, if it's your daily driver, I'd recommend you to leave root right now. Uh, but for now I'm going to do it in root. So, okay, so now let's make a directory. Uh, it already exists, of course. Um, now let's set the path. Right, now we want to get the repo binary. There we go. Anyway, um, it wasn't downloading for some reason, but uh, it, it was working fine yesterday. Um, I've already downloaded it, so it's fine. And now you want to set the permissions for it. Um, now we want to make a new directory for the source. So um, new directory ICS source. That's what we're going to call it. Already exists, of course. Now let's move to that directory. Okay. So to initialize the repo for the AOSP tree. Let's repo initialize um, 4.0.4, 4, of course. And now we want to sync up the repo. This will take some time. Okay, now let's go to code.google.com slash android slash nexus slash drivers and download the Galaxy Nexus binaries. So that one that one and that one. Okay, now you want to extract them so you get the .sh files and now click on all three of them well, in, individually of course, run in terminal and then read the license, yeah, 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 you can press F to skip forward type in I accept oh, not that and now it will extract it to vendor. Now Go on your terminal, type in Nautilus. Okay. Move to ICS source. Okay, now that 
once you've extracted all three, I only have two here, but you should have three. Once you've extracted all three, you it will be extracted to vendor. Now you just want to copy that and move it to ICS source. I've already done that. So control C to leave Nautilus. Okay, so now you're ready to compile your ROM. Now you want to type source build slash n setup dot sh. Now your environment setup. Now you want to type in lunch. So this will give you the menu of what you want to install. We want the Maguro user debug because that's our GSM Galaxy Nexus. If you're compiling for any other device, you want to choose the correct one that you want. And also remember you need the correct proprietary binary files installed. So now I want to choose number 8. Enter. Now you want to build your ROM by typing make um, hyphen J and the number you want to type is double the cores that you are running it on. So um, I have two cores on this laptop so I'm going to type in J4 and this will make the system images however if you want to make the OTA package which is like the flashable update.zip file you want to type OTA package afterwards which is what I'm going to do okay it's now compiling automatically it will take some time depending on your processor I know an i7 processor should do it in about 20 minutes a core 2 Intel Pentium will take about two or three hours especially on a laptop it's going to take quite some time to build, so I'm not going to show you what it looks like. However, if I cancel it um, and open up Nautilus, the output will be ICS out target product Maguro, and it will be here. Um, and then you just want to copy the update.zip file to the root of your SD card. And then you want to look for the Google Apps Update Zip, which you can find on the internet. Copy that to the root of your SD card and flash both of them, the updates.zip first and then Google Apps. Right, so that's how you build from the AOSP tree. So how would you, say, build from the CyanogenMod repository? Well, all you have to do is when you're setting the repo, you want to set it to github.com slash cyanogen mod slash android dot git and then repo sync for some reason my repo binary isn't working but it will sync well when that's done um, you want to use this command line to build it as it will be different and then select your device and then type make hyphen j number OTA package or if you just want the system images you don't want to type OTA package so that's it for this episode of super user TV I hope you found it useful if you have any questions you can post down in the comment section below or you can find me on Twitter or Google Plus so yeah I'll see you next time